So I had this brilliant idea to start this video off by drinking a swig of G Fuel and then going into the intro for the video, but I've done the intro so many times now that I'm starting to get a little jittery from drinking this stuff. So I have decided instead of drinking another swig of G Fuel to add on to the fire, I'm just going to play all the outtakes of me drinking the swig of G Fuel so that way you guys can get a little bit of an idea of what I was going for. You know, for a channel called Astrid Mania Videos, you would think there'd be more videos. <laughs> You know, you would think for a channel called G Fuel, more like G Eulogy. Oh my fuck. <sighs> but, anyways, what is up, my dudes? Welcome to a video here on the channel. I know, surprise, kind of crazy to see here on Asteroid Mania videos, or should I say, Asteroid Mania streams. Oh! Yeah, no, I, I've been a streaming boy over the past couple of weeks, but it's fine, man. It's fine. We're getting back into it. We're doing the thickly darn thing, rocking out with a video here. And you know, we've had videos on like Vinny's channel with the Three Way Cop, which by the way, guys, definitely go check it out. It's a fucking amazing series. Uh, but anyways, regardless, we're here going in with a little bit of a video project, something for me to throw into a timeline, something for me to edit. I'm really, really, really excited for this video. So you guys might have seen over the past couple of months these videos in the Pokemon in the Pokemon community uh, called "My Opinion on Every Blank Pokemon." Now that blank could be occupied by a typing. It could be occupied by some sort of form of Pokemon, such as like legendary Pokemon or shiny Pokemon or whatever it may be. People have been doing these videos on my opinion on just every single type of that Pokemon. And I thought to myself, seeing that idea, I was like, okay, how stupid can I make this? <laughs> So in class the other day, I came up with the brilliant idea of doing a video on my opinion on every long-necked Pokemon. And you guys might be asking yourselves, Asteroid, what constitutes a long-necked Pokemon? Well, let me go ahead and fill that in for you guys. Let me go ahead and lay down the ground rules. Basically, I'm going to scroll through this big-ass list of Pokemon, and I'm going to be determining on the spot whether they have a long neck or not, and I'm going to be giving my opinion on those Pokemon as follows so hopefully you guys are excited hopefully you guys are pumped if you guys have your own list of long necked pokemon leave it down below with all your opinions or if you just want to go based on my list and leave the opinions on my list you guys are more than welcome to but another ground rule i'd like to lay out uh, i don't think i'm going to be counting snake pokemon as long necked pokemon because technically their entire body is a is a neck and i don't know it just kind of like blurs the line between neck and not neck and that kind of just confuses me so we're going to be leaving out all snake pokemon in this video and just focusing on the neck it's going to be freaking great Great. If you guys want to see a sequel to this video covering short-necked Pokemon, comment down below and I'd love to get on that. But anyways, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Starting here, the first long-necked Pokemon we have is, of course, Charizard. This man's neck is thick. Oh, and by thick, I mean thick vertically. That's fucking ridiculous. This man is up there with the giraffes. Kind of fucking wild. Now, if I had to read this Pokemon, I'm going to have to give it probably a 10 out of 10. I just love Charizard so much. I know I'm basic. I know. I know. But whatever, man. He is probably one of my favorite long-necked Pokemon just because he was my first Pokemon. Pokemon. I started off with a Charmander and Leaf Green, and I just have really nostalgic values involving that. And uh, this man's neck, I mean, you just cannot deny that's a neck. You can even tell he's reaching for it. He's like, mm, I'm to get those leaves, bro. <laughs> Moving on to the next long necked Pokemon. What do we have here? Oh, I think we have Firo. Damn, Firo. Damn. Okay, looking like Mr. Crocker looking ass. <laughs> Keep telling I'm really hyped up. This G Fuel is doing something to me. Um, But yeah, no. So Mr. Crocker looking ass here. I would probably rate Firo maybe like a six out of 10. He's okay. He's okay. Not my favorite mod in the world. Not my least favorite mod in the world. It's really interesting to me how a lot of the bird Pokemon in Gen 1 are very, like, true to form. Like, they're very bird-like as opposed to Pokemon-like, which is kind of cool, I guess. It definitely gives them some uniqueness. I feel like a lot of the bird Pokemon moving forward in later generations kind of strayed away from being, like, actual birds and more like Pokemon. Um, more like monstrous, I guess is probably the best way to put it, but, you know, that that's nearer there. I just think it has a little bit of uniqueness to Firo and Pidgey and stuff like that, and I respect it. So, Firo, Nice and long neck. I respect that. And also the beak is very long as well to go along with the long neck. So that's pretty great. Let's see. Clefable. Ah, he, he doesn't even have a neck. <laughs> Could you imagine if I did a list of like no necked Pokemon, bro? Bro, comment down below what other stupid ideas you guys want me to do. Because literally I'm open to anything. Ninetales? Does Ninetales have a long neck? Ah, you know... Kinda? Overall, Ninetales, very fantastic Pokemon. Loving the neck, loving the hairdo, loving the color tips and the tails. Uh, freaking incredible mon. I always have a good time running with the Ninetales. It's just a solid mon overall. Super cool, super incredible. Reminds me of Naruto. Next Pokemon! 
Next mods we have here are Ponyta and Rapidash. Both mods are freaking amazing. I love the whole fire horse aesthetic. I love the simplicity. I love the, the kind of magical aspect of it. Like, this is something you would see in a fairy tale, which I think is really cool. So, Rapidash is sweet. I love its speed. I love that one anime episode where they raced on the Rapidash, and you had, like, all the Pokemon lining up to race, and then somehow they didn't burn their asses on a Rapidash, uh, which is kind of impressive, not gonna lie. I wonder if that's a feat of Rapidash. I wonder if we can control the temperature of its flame. Flames. Maybe that's possible. Maybe that's doable. If that's the case, mad respect to Rapidash. Um, but yeah, anyways, cool Pokemon. Moving on, though. Now we're getting into some thick necks. Look at these necks. Not just one, but two necks. Are you kidding me, man? You know, I was thinking there was a lot of fire-type Pokemon on this list, and I was kind of getting worried that maybe the whole list would be fire-types. But no, we're rocking out here with a Duduo with the longest neck in the game. Damn, bro. Damn, he has two of them. That's incredible. Obviously, 10 out of 10. I actually really like Doduo, though. Super creative design. Uh, very bird-like, which I can respect. And uh, they look like three little puffballs. They look like little marshmallows if marshmallows were brown and had necks. Uh, moving on. <laughs> And then, of course, you can't mention Duduo without Dodrio. We got Dodrio, just the evolved form. A third neck is added. He is the pinnacle of necking in Pokemon. His neck skills surpass those of all other Mons. I really respect it. I like Dodrio a lot. Not even gonna lie. He's very tall at 5 feet 11. That's very impressive. And uh, he's just a cool Mon overall. I like how it's a bird Mon. I like how it's a flying type Mon, but he can't fly. Like, that's just kind of interesting, you know? It makes him stand out against all the other bird mods. And not having any arms or wings just makes him a devastating foot race of fury, which I respect. And necking fury. This man could neck you to the nether and back, which is kind of impressive. All right, who do we got next here? I feel like there's a lot of mons lacking necks here. Like, I, I really genuinely thought there'd be more than this. Like, I'm actually kind of concerned. There's, there's like, no necks here on the playing field of Pokemon. Pokemon in Gen 1 especially were really lacking necks. Yo, but there my boy is! The king himself! You already know. Lapras is next up. That neck is so damn nice. The mascot of the channel. Favorite Pokemon. This is easily my favorite long-necked Pokemon. He's just so amazing, man. I I loved him in the anime. I've been loving him since I started playing Pokemon. Uh, the transport Pokemon, eight foot of pure neck. I fucking love him. I, I don't even know what else to say. Um, he's just super cool. And then over time, as I've had him as my mascot for longer and longer, he has just become even more in tune. He's become even more solidified as my favorite Mon. He's just so calm, cool, collected, awesome. And uh, he honestly represents me very well. So I, uh, I fucking love Lapras. His neck is beautiful. And that's basically all I have to say about him. All right, I think that's basically it for Gen 1. I might consider Moltres. Yeah, okay, we'll consider Moltres here as a, as a long-necked Mon. Not gonna lie, I, I'm very shocked at how scarce long-necked Mons are, especially in the first generation. We'll see how this criteria uh, fares in later generations. But here we are with Moltres. I really like Moltres. Um, he's pretty cool. He's, um... He's all right. <laughs> I don't really have any strong opinions about Moltres. He's kind of like Rapidash where just, you know, having those flames all over him is pretty sick. Um, you know, the only thing that kind of scares me about Moltres and gives me nightmares at night is him without the fire because then it just becomes a, a fucking rubber chicken that has no flames and is significantly less cool and hot all at the same time. But outside of that, Moltres has my score of about a 7 out of 10. Uh, not a bad legendary mon and definitely is very intimidating. Man, I don't know what it is, but like... 99% of these mons have just been fire types and flying types. That's actually ridiculous. I think Lapras was the only one that wasn't fire flying. Moving on, though, we already got a long-necked mon in the form of Bailey. Shout out to Bailey. I like Bailey a lot. He's pretty simplistic. Definitely not my favorite Jodo starter, uh, but he is pretty solid overall. I really like the little nubby things on his on his neck. The only thing that concerns me about this necked Pokemon is that uh, those things don't seem very connected. It feels like they could just fall off in one fell swoop. I wonder if he can regrow them or maybe he can reattach them by picking them up. But then again, he doesn't really have any hands to pick them up. So I don't know how he would go about that. But other than that, Bayleaf, really cool Pokemon. I like him. He's a little dinosaur boy. I respect it. Moving on to Meganium though. Look at that neck. Oh boy. That's a, that's a neck. You know, very simplistic mod, but overall I don't mind him. I don't mind him. He's okay. He's cool. Uh, very appealing with that flower little veil. Super cool. He's pretty cool and competitive as well. I like how bulky he is. I like how he's just pretty neutral down the line. Very average Mon. I think even design-wise, type-wise, all over the place is very average. But average ain't bad. You know, you could be average and still be good. It's definitely not the worst Mon I've seen. So we'll go ahead and move on from that. His neck is definitely something to uh, to admire, though, for sure. Typhlosion? Now, Typhlosion, does he have a thick... I, you know? Okay, I'll give it to him. 
I'll give it to him. You know, it's almost like in this case, his neck is just kind of like an extension of his body. So it's hard to say whether his neck really is long. Uh, but what I will say is that his neck is very impressively thick. I think that's where we can give him points for sure. He's the Volcano Pokemon. I really like Typhlosion as well. Definitely uh, one of my favorite Johto starters. But I think the problem with Typhlosion here is that I feel like he's too simplistic. I know I was just talking about Meganium is cool and like simplistic is okay. But like, and me personally, I, I feel like Typhlosion could use uh, some more details here, either like some some body aesthetic or like just some more colors or maybe some more fire just around the body. It just feels very barren to me for some reason. I mean, not saying that I don't like the Pokemon because I do like the Pokemon. I just kind of wish there was more going on with the Typhlosion. And I think if they ever were to make a Mega Typhlosion, which God forbid, I hope Megas come back, uh, that I think they would be able to add a lot aesthetically to his design and making me like him a lot more. But um, yeah, that's basically it for Typhlosion. What do we got next? We have Fralligator. Unfortunately, Fralligator is not very long long necked though i don't think i can really give him that criteria for alligator though is pretty sweet probably my favorite gen 2 starter fucking amazing dude for alligator sweet uh moving on though what do we have next what do we have next any long necked pokemon here i don't see any man dude all these pokemon are just lacking now <gasps> My boy, come on in with the save! Rocket now. Okay, I love the fact that they added fairy type to Togetic. I think that's perfect. I think that's amazing. Togetic is really sweet. Um, I always was really excited having a Togetic in Pokemon games because it meant that I was one stage away from a Togekiss, and he was always one of those Pokemon that just stood out, you know? If you had a Togetic, that meant you raised that man from an egg, and it just meant so much. I remember he used to be the star player in uh, a lot of my teams, like in Gen 2. I think it was Gen 2? Yeah, I think Gen 2 or Gen 4, one of those generations, I honestly don't remember. Um, but anyways, Togetic, really sweet mod. I always loved having him on my team, and I always loved the progression moving on to the Togekiss line. And that neck is definitely nothing to scoff about. Uh, moving on to the next Pokemon here, we have my boy, Ampharos, the Lighthouse Tower himself. You could say he's pretty sick. <laughs> uh, Gen 2 joke. But yeah, no, he's rocking and rolling. He's, uh, he's got a pretty killer neck. I actually really love, like, using Ampharos, uh, just overall, because he's super offensive, he's super specially prominent, uh, his design's super cool. I, I really, I really don't know what else to say about him. He's just sweet. He's just sweet, man. He's a very, very cool mon. Also, Mareep and Flaffy are pretty cool as well, even though I cannot give my opinions on those mons in this list simply because of the fact that their neck is not long enough. Moving on, uh, we got Pseudo Widow here. Is Pseudo Widow count? Yeah, I guess, I guess it would all counts. Its whole body is kind of a neck, which, you know, is kind of concerning because then it might fall into snake territory, but he's definitely less of a snake and more of a tree, so I'll rock out with it. I like Widow. He's okay. Um... He's pretty cool. I liked him in the anime. I like his his kind of design as a pseudo tree and like the typing kind of fits that with him being actually a rock type as opposed to a grass type. So I like the whole idea of pseudo wudo being a fake tree. That's just that's just a really cool concept. And that's probably my favorite thing about pseudo wudo. Uh, moving on though, some flora. Eh, some flora's close, man. I don't know if I'd consider that a long neck. Uh, Espeon Umbreon. They have moderate necks, I'd say. Uh, I don't really. <gasps> oh, okay. All right. Alright, Drafferig has an okay neck, but here's my complaint. Here's my complaint. Its neck isn't long enough. This is not a giraffe Pokemon. It's just not. It's even called the long neck Pokemon. You're telling me that that is the long neck Pokemon. That is not a long neck. Like, it's, it's a mediocre neck, right? It's an okay. It's like probably low tier long neck but that is not the longest neck we've seen in this list we've barely gotten started on this list and he already has been outclassed as the longest necked pokemon like Drafferig has as a neck that is okay and it's solid but it's definitely not worthy of the title of being the long neck pokemon so Drafferig, you know i respect you you're cool it's kind of interesting how you're normal and psychic i think that's interesting like the fact that your name is spelled the same way backwards as forwards that's super interesting but like bro i i just think as a long neck pokemon um that's just that's just not gonna cut he's only four feet 11 like that's li literally i think lapras's entire neck outclasses this whole man's body you know so like i just don't think it's fair that he's called the long neck pokemon even though i i do think his neck is decent it's just not worthy of that title so moving on though uh what do we got next all right next up we got skarmory here skarmory's neck is decently sized uh, i really like skarmory as a pokemon just like the whole concept of a metal fucking 
flying death trap is actually amazing. Uh, he's pretty annoying to fight against just because he's super bulky and his typing obviously makes him immune to ground, which is one of Steel's weaknesses, which is super unfortunate. But overall, I really like Skarmor. He's super cool. He's super badass. He's got those uh, sliced up wings. I don't know how he flies being as heavy as he is. A hundred and how many pounds? Jeez, bro. Jeez, bro. You got to hit the gym or just, I don't know, cut some of that, that steel off. Start uh, molding that shit. But yeah, no, this man's heavy as shit. I don't know how he flies. It's impressive. All right. We have... I have Lugia here. Now, Lugia, I have a story for you guys. I like Lugia a lot, but I only like him from Gen 1 to Gen... Or Gen he wasn't in Gen 1. Gen 2 to Gen 5. That's that's all that I like in terms of Lugia. And you guys might be wondering, Asteroid, why did you stop liking Lugia when Gen 6 came around? Well, the reason why is because of his 3D model. I just, I hate it, dude. I actually hate it. It's my least favorite 3D model in the game. When the game went to 3D and Lugia got the 3D model treatment, it was just like, what the fuck? Like, this man went from a streamlined, killer, speedy, aerodynamic beast to being a fucking flubber chicken that could barely fly. Like, <laughs> that's literally what this man become. And it made me very sad seeing him in that form. But overall, I really like Lugia. His typing uh, has me baffled, but outside of that, he's, super, he's a super cool mon. You know, the winged hands kind of throw me off a little bit, but outside of that, um, I loved his appearance in the Pokemon 2000 movie. And uh, his neck is definitely something to scoff about. So, mad respect, mad respect. Moving on, though, we have Ho-Oh and his neck. Now, Ho-Oh's neck is kind of similar to Spiro's neck. And then it has that, like, you know, that, that bulge, kind of like Mr. Crocker looking ass. Which, I mean, I respect it. Uh, Ho-Oh's rocking now. I do like Ho-Oh over Lugia, if I had to, uh, like, give a, give a favorite here. I just really like the idea of a Phoenix. And I think having a Phoenix Pokemon as a legendary is a really freaking cool. And his presence in the anime is really sick. Um, also, just... Fire flying is a fucking amazing typing, so mad respect, mad respect. Moving on, we got Grovile here, starting off powerful with Gen 3. In case you guys are wondering, this is actually Ryan's favorite mod. It's not King Corfish, or it's not Corfish, as you would uh, expect from his name, but it's actually Grovile. And I like Grovile a lot. He's a really cool ninja boy, got a very thick neck. I respect it. He looks like he could perform Shadow Clone Jutsu, which is kind of cool. Next up, we got Sceptile. I love Sceptile so much. I love all the Gen 3 starters so damn much. He's just cool. He's just cool, man. I got nothing else to say. He's just fucking sick. With that leaf blade, with the blaze eyes, like going, yeah, when he fought that dark ray that one time. Like, bro, he's just sick. He is just sick. Next up, we got Kabuskin now. I like Kabuskin and I like his neck, but the only thing about it, and Ryan pointed this out to me, and I, I hate to be the guy to, to also point this out to you guys in case you guys have gone um, a while without realizing this, but uh, he's shaped like a penis, man. <laughs> He just is. He just is, and that makes me sad. So, Kapuskin, I have to dock your points for that. I'll give you a, a 7 out of 10. We got Blaziken. Nah, Blaziken doesn't have a long neck. Fuck that. Fuck that. I'll give Kabuskin the long neck treatment, but Blaziken, eh, his neck is kind of short. I don't know if I really consider that a long neck. Scrolling through all these Gen 3 mods, it seems like a lot of these don't have long necks. Like, I'm going through, but I I don't see any, man. I, I really don't. Dude, Waylord is sick. I love Waylord. Sorry, he's not he's not a long neck mod. I can't I can't talk about Waylord. Um, oh, I guess Torkoal. Okay, Torkoal kind of counts. Torkoal kind of counts. I like Torkoal. Uh, he's pretty sick. He's a very unique fire type, which I really like. It's kind of weird that he doesn't have a pre-evolution or an evolved form, but overall, uh, I think he's cool. I think he's sick. That's basically all I can say about him. I love his smoke attire. Definitely very sweet. Uh, we got Flygon! Okay, yeah, now we're talking. Got Flygon here. I love Flygon. One of my favorite mons. He's just so unique, man. He's one of those mons that's always stood out to me as a kid, um, as just being amazing. You always thought he was a bug type, but then it was like, yeet, I'm ground dragon, which is kind of cool. Um, his neck is incredible. His design is just so streamlined, so damn cool. And, you know, he's not the most powerful mon in the world, but he, he's sick. He's just really fun to use, and his design is incredibly powerful. So, I like Flygon a lot. He definitely flew his way into my heart, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, we got Altaria here, speaking of flying, I love Altaria, Altaria is really cute, the Mega Evolve form is really sweet as well, uh, Dragon and Flying, fantastic typing, the whole cloud idea, the whole cloud concept is just really cute and fluffy, and I respect it, I respect it, what do we got next, any other long neck Pokemon here, Seviper, I wish I could talk about you, but you're not a, uh, a long neck Pokemon, you're just a snake, which is super unfortunate, Barboach, ah, Barboach is definitely more of a snake kind of form, I'm gonna avoid talking about him, Corfish, bro, Ryan doesn't even have a neck, Oh, got him. Yo, can we get some hashtag no, no neck Ryans up in the fucking comment section? Destroy this man. I cannot believe Ryan chose a mascot that doesn't have a neck. Like, what a shame, dude. What a shame, man. Mm. I, okay, does a leap count? I don't know, man. Is this his head? Or is this tiny little thing his head? And then, like, this is the neck. I, I have no clue, man. The leap is just a fucking anomaly. But if I had to give an opinion on him, I would just say... 
<sighs> he's okay. <laughs> it's just there's a lot of dicks, man. There's a lot of dicks. I don't know how I feel about that. Same with Cradilly. Um, he's cool. Okay, this this definitely counts as a neck. I would say Cradilly definitely takes the neck award here. Um, yeah, I like Cradilly. He's okay. He's all right. Uh, the dicks are very prominent, but outside of that, very respectable mon. Uh, we have my low tick here, except my low tick is definitely more of a snake form, which makes me sad because he's super cool. We got Tropius. Okay, I can talk about Tropius. I feel like Tropius is extremely underrated. I feel like Game Freak totally just, just cock blocked this man, to be honest. I love him. I love his neck. I love his design. I wish he was better. I wish he had a mega evolution, uh, and I wish he was more usable, but unfortunately, Tropius is kind of just overshadowed by basically every other Gen 3 mon. It's super a shame, or it's super Super, uh, it's super gross, not gonna lie, but Tropius himself, I love his design, and I, I wish he was better, to be honest. Alright, we got Salamence here. Salamence has a very respectable neck. I love Salamence a lot. One of my favorite pseudo-legendaries. I feel like Flygon, to me, um, is a little, a little favored, in my opinion. I think Flygon is, is preferred for me, personally, just because I prefer his design, but Salamence is extremely powerful. I love his Mega, even if his wings do look like a fucking croissant, and I just love the progression. You know, like he literally went from a little bag on that couldn't fly to full grown Salamence with big ass wings, and then Mega Salamence just said, Nah, I'm all wing boy. We're flying around at the speed of sound. I just. I love him, man. He looks like a saucer, and I respect that. All right, we got Latios and Latios next. Uh, I love both these mons. I think they're amazing. I love how they're kind of twins, and I love the uh, the relationship between the two. The movie with their with them both in it was uh, was okay, mediocre at best. I love the whole ending though, where like you, you know you don't know if Ash kissed the girl or the Latios or Latios, whichever it was, which is kind of crazy. Like that kind of blew my mind. That was a super epic uh, twist at the end of that movie. In case you guys are wondering, the Latios. I'm pretty sure they can transform into people. It's been a very long time since I've seen the movie. Uh, but basically, there's this one girl character, and at the end, they, they kiss Ash, and it's like, whoa! Like, whoa! What was that? Was that Pokemon bestiality, or was that, like, actual the, the girl? Like, it kind of leaves it up to mystery, which I really like. I love Megalodios and Megalodios. I love how they look the same, and they've kind of merged together. Um, and I love the whole soaring feature in Oras. They're just overall fantastic mods. Kyogre does not have a neck. Super unfortunate. Groudon! Okay, Groudon's neck is fantastic. I really like Groudon. Overall, I'd say I prefer Kyogre, uh, but the whole, like, just beastly nature of Groudon really speaks to me. So, Groudon, overall, fantastic mon. Rayquaza, I wish I could talk about you, but you're, you're, you're all neck, man. You're just, you're a snake. I can't. I, I decided to eliminate you from the list. I might have to change my mind on that, because, like, dude, Rayquaza's fucking amazing. I love Rayquaza. I'm sorry, I can't be giving my opinions on non-necked Pokemon. My apologies. Uh, moving on, though, what do we have? We're going into Gen 4 here. We have Straptor? No, not really. I love Straptor, though. Shit, I keep giving my opinions on these long-necked, on these non-necked Pokemon. I gotta save those for other videos. Cricketoon? Cricketoon's neck is actually pretty decent. I love its cry. But that's basically all I like about it. Um, it the whole concept of, of it being a composer is actually really sweet, though. So, outside of that, the concept and the cry, both amazing aspects of that Pokemon, but that's basically all I like about it. We got Rampardos here with the thick neck. You can't really see it based on this picture, but he does have a pretty, um... An extensive dinosaur neck. I really like Rampardos. His attack stat is fucking insane, and uh, I just overall like the Mon a lot. He's just pretty beastly. Super cool design. What do we got next? Uh, next up, it looks like we got Gastronon here. I really like Gastronon. He's always been a staple for me in the Gen 4 games, uh, and like his whole just slug appeal is really cool. I like how he's very viable. Like you can you can literally carry this man all the way to the champion, and and he'd be a very essential member of the team. Like you wouldn't think that a Pokemon like this, like an early game sort of underwhelming design uh, looking water slug Pokemon be that good in the long run but dude this man this man kills it uh, late game which is freaking amazing next up we got Gabite here I love uh, the whole Garchomp line so Gabite Garchomp, freaking amazing mods. The only thing that makes me kind of sad about Garchomp is that, you know, his Mega isn't very competitively viable, or at least I don't, I don't think it is. I haven't played the competitive game in a very long time, but from what I can remember, uh, he wasn't the most viable Pokemon in the world when you Mega Evolve him, because typically a regular Garchomp with Choice Scarf is just as good, if not better, so it's kind of hard to, to waste your Mega Stone on that. The only thing, the other only thing I don't like about Garchomp uh, is that his Shiny is just really, like, underwhelming. Like, you would think a Pokemon like this would have such a cool Shiny, but his Shiny is literally just like like a slight tone shift. It's so slight that you wouldn't even, you, you could miss it so easily. And the Mega Garchomp being pink is kind of just like, okay, like it's cool, it's all right, but it's like, all right. Uh, also, I, I love Mega Garchomp a lot. Like he's cool, he's pretty sick. I love the blades for hands. It's just so devastatingly awesome. Uh, moving on though, we have, ah, not Lucario. I want to talk about Lucario, but Lucario doesn't really have that much of a neck. Drapion? 
Drapion, okay, okay. Drapion's neck is very substantial. I really like Drapion, especially his typing. His typing is just so unique, and he's such a standout-ish Pokemon. Um, he's also pretty good and competitive, or at least I remember him being pretty good and competitive. Super cool Mon, uh, super awesome typing, just super all, overall, very awesome aesthetic, very intimidating, I highly respect him, um, what do we got next? You know, honestly, going through here, what I've learned is that a lot of these Mons just don't have long necks, like, I genuinely thought that, uh, this list would be much more prominent, I, I am, I am shocked, I am flabbergasted, to say the least, if you guys, oh! I all go was good was good I see you with that neck um if you guys want to see more lists like this though literally comment down below I would love to do more videos like this I'm having a blast Dialga I love Dialga dude I love Dialga so damn much what I, what I say all the time is uh, my favorite part of Gen 4 uh, were the legendaries I love all the legendaries in Gen 4 Dialga is fucking amazing uh the movie the rise of Darkrai is my favorite Pokemon movie so the fact that he plays a big role in that is amazing um, I just, I love Dialga. Dialga's sick. Same with Polkia. Now, Polkia, Ryan also pointed out to me, uh, Polkia looks like a penis as well, which makes me hate Ryan just a little bit more every single day I think about it. Uh, but outside of that, Polkia is amazing. His neck is incredible. Uh, I always used to play Pearl as a kid, and he's just such an intimidating, amazing legendary. So, Polkia, fucking amazing. And then going back to the Rise of Darkrai, fantastic. And then Garatina! I love Garatina. I know the origin form is definitely on the on the snake level, but we're just going to be talking about the altered form here uh, because regardless, his neck is prominent. I love Garatina. One of my favorite legendaries. Actually, probably my favorite legendary tied with Rayquaza. Fucking amazing, man. Just incredible. I love, I love, I love him so much. I... I literally can't say anymore. He's just amazing. We got Cresselia here. Cresselia is okay. I like Cresselia. I wish Cresselia was more of a counterpart to Darkrai. I feel like Cresselia gets outshadowed by Darkrai, both literally and metaphorically. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I love Cresselia. I wish she had, you know, more prevalence in the grand scheme of things, and it's kind of a shame that it does get outshadowed by Darkrai, but overall, fantastic Mon. Fion, not much of a neck there. Uh, Darkrai, I love Darkrai, but he has no neck. And then last but not least, we got Arceus. I love Arceus a lot. Uh, fantastic concept, fantastic Mon. I love everything about him. He's just, he's just great. He's just great. The only thing about it that I would say, and thanks once again, Ryan, for ruining my favorite Pokemon, uh, he looks like a deer stuck through a fence, which is unfortunate to say the least, but I still love him regardless. Now we're on Gen 5, man. We're making a lot of progress here. First and foremost, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, man, I, I, I guess we can count Servine. We can count Servine. I won't count Superior, because Superior loses the legs and becomes much more snake-like, but Servine here, I love Servine. I, I love this entire line of starters. They're just great. I love their designs. Fucking amazing. Snivy 2, uh, if you want to count Snivy as a long neck Mon, I respect that. We got Samrod here. Samrod's rocking out with a pretty solid neck. I really like Samrod as well. Um, I feel like he's kind of underwhelming. Like, I wish there was more to him. I don't know. Like, it's just one of those things where, like, I've kind of been slightly off-put from Samrod, um, just for whatever reason. But overall, I like him. It's just like... He's, he's always giving me weird vibes, and I don't quite know why that is, uh, but overall, I, I do like him. It's just those vibes kind of set me off a little bit, and maybe it's just because, like, going from Duat to Samurai, you wouldn't expect that to be what the evolution is, um, but now I've gotten more used to him. Now I really like him, and I love the whole Gen 5 starter concept of having, like, the, um, the, uh, what's it, the pledge moves, and how they bounce off each other, like, that's just fantastic. Got Watchhog here. Watchhog is okay. Kind of annoying in, like, the second gym of, uh, Black and White, so he kind of sucks ass. He takes... Take some hits for that, but overall his neck is uh, mildly impressive, so I'll give him that. Stoutland, uh, Stoutland, oops, Daisy, that's the wrong link. Stoutland, uh, he's okay. Actually, he doesn't really have much of a neck. I'm gonna stop talking about him now. Got Purloin, Purloin's okay. Uh, Lightbird's okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, all the the fucking semi pores, they all suck. Uh, well, I mean, they're okay. I, I like I like Pansage with Silent just because it made sense, and I like the whole gym concept of them each having a monkey that contradicts the, the starter type. Like, I think that's really cool. Uh, I don't really know if they're considered long-necked Mons, though. They're kind of borderline with that. We got Unpheasant. Unpheasant, I feel like, falls in the long neck category. I like Unpheasant. I feel like he gets outshadowed by a lot of the better uh, bird starter Pokemon, but outside of that, I like its two forms. I, I think it's okay. Um, but overall, I just, it's kind of a shame that it gets outshadowed by, like, Staraptor and stuff. It's just not on the same level as Staraptor, unfortunately. We got some Shotgun Blitzel. I love these Mons. They, they remind me of Rapidash and Ponyta, except electric-themed. And I just, I love the, the idea of them. I love the aesthetic. I love the whole just electric, uh, aesthetic. It's just great. It's just fantastic. Next up, we got Scolipede, my boy. I love Scolipede. Absolutely love Scolipede. Fucking amazing Mon. Love its typing. Love its design. 
Awesome. Fantastic. Moving on. What do we got next? Uh, we got Krokorok. Krokorok's pretty cool. I felt like he was pretty annoying in the anime, though. I overall hated the black and white anime, and, like, the whole Krokorok, just Ash's Krokorok was just... He was just dumb, man. With the sunglasses, he was like, rag rag and I was like, bro, shut the fuck up. So, yeah, overall, um, not my favorite Mon, uh, just for that reason alone. But overall, like, game-wise, I think he's pretty cool. Uh, Crocodile lost his fucking neck, and his head became a penis, so we're just gonna ignore him. We got Archeops here. Okay, Archeops, I really like. I love his design. I love his concept, um, but his ability just sucks, man. Like, the fact that it holds him back. I feel like that's annoying. I just I just feel like it's gross. Like, I would have much rathered if they would have just made him weaker, you know, and, and then, like, gave him a normal ability. I think that would have been perfect. But, yeah, overall, really cool Mon. I love his colors. I love his aesthetic. It's just his ability holds him back, which sucks. Ooh, damn! Swana! Ooh! Oh! I like Swana. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I don't really have any uh, super strong opinions about Swana. It's okay. It's cool. White bird Pokemon. You know how it is. Flying around at weddings. I respect it. It's just, you know, not like the most standout Pokemon in the world. Its neck is something to behold, though. I will give it that. Alright, we got Saw's Duck here. Saw's Duck. <laughs> Saw's Buck. That's, that's, yep, quack. That's how it is. Uh, Saw's Duck here. Saw's Duck is okay. It's just, I don't know, man. He's kind of basic. I love, like, his whole concept with the weather. But I feel like because he's so standard, and because he just looks like a fucking deer, like, there's no specialty about him. He doesn't look like a Pokemon, he looks like a deer. And I know I talked about in the beginning how I actually liked how the bird Pokemon in Gen 1 were more just birds, um, because it helped them stand out. But Saw's Buck, or Saw's Duck, Quack, uh, just... I don't know, man. He just, he doesn't really fit the bill for me. Um, Pidgey and, and Firo, I feel like... I feel like even though they are more towards the bird side of the spectrum, they still look like Pokemon. This dead ass just looks like a fucking deer that they just drew and put into the game. So I'm gonna say uh, no for Saw's Buck or Saw's Duck. I mean, like his weather concept is really cool, but I feel like his design definitely needed some spicing up. Um, that's just my opinion, though. Comment down below what you guys think about these mons. We have a lot of no necks here. Damn, you guys are really struggling. Electros is sweet, even though he's definitely more snake like. Uh, yeah, they, these Pokemon just don't have necks. I, oh, we got Haxorus. Okay, I love Haxorus. Haxorus is sweet, super badass, super intimidating, mad respect. He reminds me of Mega Garchomp with these fucking, these fucking fangs. Um, super dope, super dope Mon. I really like him a lot. But yeah, no, I don't know what it is, man, but I, there's just, there's just not a lot of long-necked Mons. Oh, we got Minshaw. Okay, we can talk about Minshaw. Minshaw's okay. Um, he's alright. Like, I don't love him, but I don't hate him. Uh, he's just kind of borderline for me. He definitely stands out, which I like about him. So, that's pretty cool. But, you know, it's weird. Like, I genuinely thought going into this video, there'd be a lot more long-necked mons. But we're actually kind of struggling here. Oh, uh, yeah, we got Mandibuzz. Okay, Mandibuzz is kind of middle ground for me. Uh, once again, probably like a 5 out of 10. He's okay. He's alright. I like his design. The way he plays in competitive is super annoying, though, with, like, you know, the whole, uh... The whole, like, toxic, just stall garbage is kind of annoying, but outside of that, he's, he's alright. And I, I don't know, maybe some of these sets and some of these Pokemon have changed competitively over time. I haven't really gotten into the competitive game. I haven't played the competitive game in literal years, like, not since Oras. So, you know, a lot of stuff has probably changed since I played it last. So, I don't really know, but just based on my competitive experience, I can say that that Mandibuzz is annoying. Uh, we got Heatmore here. I feel like Heatmore is really underrated. I love Heatmore's design a lot. I think he's super cool. His concept is really cool, and, like, his whole dynamic with Durant is really cool. It reminds me of Sabiper and, um, and Zangoose, which I think is really sweet. Uh, his neck is pretty, pretty significant. I like how it's cone-shaped, and, uh, I think he's just a really sweet mon. I wish he was given more love, not gonna lie. We got Dano with a pretty solid neck. I love Dano. I did ass. I just love him so much. His emo haircut, uh, his, his whole, like, little pebbles here, like, little, little purple spots in his design. His colors are fantastic. Dark and Dragon works fantastically. Um, I love him a lot. We got Zuelus. I love him. Same as I love Dano, uh, with the two necks. He's double teaming. Fucking respect it a lot. And last but not least, you already know what I'm gonna say. Hydreigon, uh, fantastic. He has, like, hand necks. It's kinda wild. Like, do you consider those his heads? Or do you consider, though, those his, his hands with heads on it? And if, the, if they're hands, then can they really be considered necks? I don't know, but I love Hydragon. He's just fucking amazing. Regardless of whether he has three necks or one, uh, fantastic Pokemon. I love how the hair finally lifts from his eyes and you reveal his, his cold, heartless eyes. It's just, it is terrifying, man. We got Cobalion. Cobalion's okay. 
he's okay. Um, I, I liked the encounters in like black and white where you would find them just kind of scattered around the region. I really like that. Um, so I'll give him points for that, but he's definitely not my favorite sort of justice. We got Verizian here. The only thing that bugs me about, about Verizian is that his name just reminds me of Verizon and that just annoys me for some reason. Like I literally can't think of this man's neck without thinking of a long fucking cell phone tower, uh, which is kind of annoying. And he kind of looks like a cell phone tower too, which is unfortunate. But outside of that, his neck is very impressive. I don't know what's going on with this random ass leaf here, but overall, uh, respectable mon. I like him a little bit. He's okay. He's okay. What do we got next? We got Regiram. I love Regiram, dude. Fucking love Regiram. The only thing that concerns me about, about Regiram is this awfully placed uh, tuft of hair here. Kind of just gives me some some creepy vibes. It just kind of feels like Regiram is permanently erect, which makes me kind of sad. Uh, but overall, uh, speaking of erect, his neck is definitely that. Like, dude, this man's neck is up to par with some of the greats. And I, I just love that. I love the whole truth versus ideals aspect of black and white. And um, it's it's just great. It's just fantastic. Next up, we got uh, Zekrom. Does Zekrom have a long neck? Uh, yeah, okay, his neck is okay. I love Zekrom. I love Zekrom so much. He's just cool. <laughs> He's just cool. That's my that's my opinion on him. He's just fucking amazing. Uh, we got Kiram. Okay, I like Kiram. I like Kiram a lot. His fusion with Black Kiram and White Kiram, uh, they're also pretty sick. Um, they kind of look like a mess of a, hod a hodgepodge, but then again, I feel like that's kind of what they were going for, considering... You know, they're they're literally fusions. And I think having a, a, like official fusions in Pokemon is really cool. Like that's just a super cool concept that you would think would only be like a fan game thing, but the fact that it's actually real is kind of freaking lit. Uh, so I really like Kiram. The only thing that sucks about Black Kiram is that, or is it White Kiram or Black Kiram? One of these Kirams are just like really garbage and competitive because they don't have the moves to accommodate uh, for their stats. I think Black Kiram just doesn't have any physical attacks. Like a lot of people run special Black Kiram because there's literally no good attacks to to handle its attack stat and that, that might be maybe that's flipped like maybe it's actually white Kiram that has that problem i think it is black Kiram though and that's just kind of weird to me but outside of that um that's fine you know it sucks but it is how it is how it is moving on into gen 6 we have amora and auroras i love both these pokemon uh it sucks because they're not like the best in the world like they're kind of eh, you know in the grand scheme of things but overall i love these months like i i was blown away when I when I saw this man for the first time and uh, the first time I played through X and Y he was he was a staple He was a staple. I love this dude so much and Tyrantrum's cool as well But Aurora's is fucking I don't know. I just really like his design He's so pretty and cute and I just I respect that a lot uh, moving on. We got Sligu here I really like Sligu. Sligu is definitely out there. He's very uh, charismatic, which I respect about him uh, Overall though not my favorite uh, pseudo legendary in the world And if we're gonna talk about Gudra as well, which I feel like we have to look at that neck Oh, I loved Gudra in the XYZ anime uh, so I immediately gave him points for that and I definitely think he's a cool pseudo legendary I don't think he's my favorite uh, by any means but he, he's definitely sick like him in competitive play is really cool as well um, and he's just he's just an overall solid mon I would say uh, he's a little gross but outside of that very solid mon uh, what else we got here I guess Trevenant kind of counts I love Trevenant his design super cool definitely super unique um, fantastic I love Trevenant a lot we got Gorgeist here Gorgeist is okay I like Gorgeist he's really cool he's like Halloween themed and um, the aesthetic is is definitely interesting um, but outside of that, I uh, can't really give him too much points outside of that. I really like his ghost and grass typing though. Him and Trevenant are a fantastic pair and I, I really respect that. Moving on, uh, I guess we have Xerneas. I love Xerneas, man. Xerneas is so damn powerful. What a good mon to stampede the horde of fairy types. I, I love it, man. The fact that there's a fairy type legendary is so damn cool. I remember being blown away when X and Y came out, dude. Like this was, this was some serious shit. And I really, really enjoy that. We got Yveltal as well. Yveltal is fucking amazing. Just, just dead ass. I love him a lot. He's sick. His shiny is underwhelming to say the least. It looks like, uh, what does his shiny look like? Isn't it? Isn't that the toothpaste one? What's his shiny look like? Does it not show his shiny? I hope they do show his shiny. Oh no, no, that's Zygarde. That's the toothpaste. That's the Colgate. Fucking minty fresh looking ass. Yeah. And speaking of Zygarde, I like Zygarde a lot. Not gonna lie. I wish they would have gave him a better like, just, just story. Like the fact that they just kind of tacked him into Sun and Moon sucks. To be honest, he needed his own game. Actually, yo, his shiny's cool. His shiny's cool. Like, he looks like a package of toothpaste, but outside of that, dude, his shiny's sick. Um, yeah, no, I, I just, I just been really sad at how Zygarde got so disrespected. Like, to be honest, like, look at this bitch. He's so cool. He's so cool, but he just got thrown into Sun and Moon, and it just, it's just gross, man. They needed a Pokemon Z. And there's so many unanswered questions in X and Y that I just, I get so sad thinking about, man. Like, dude, there's, there's like the fucking power plants, and like, ah, oh, dude, it just, it makes me sad. Makes me sad. Next up, uh, we're moving into Gen 7 here. We have Toucanon. Toucanon's okay. He's pretty forgettable in my opinion. Uh, but overall, he's okay. He's alright. I like him. He's not my favorite uh, bird Pokemon, but overall, he's respectable. Gumshoes. I like Gumshoes a little bit. He's okay. 
Um, not my favorite mod in the world. Oh my god, I almost just spilled my fucking G Fuel. It's fine, though. It's fine. We good. Mm. They got the cap was on. But yeah. Gum shoes, okay. Reasonably okay. Next up, we got Salazzle. I love Salazzle. Fucking love Salazzle. That's all I have to say. Salazzle's just great. Fantastic. One of my favorite Gen 7 mods. Uh, beautiful. Amazing. 10 out of 10. What do we have next? We have Savali and, and Type Null, I guess. I really like Savali and Type Null. The whole concept of, like, Type Null literally just being a Savali with a head strap is, uh, it's cool. It's interesting for sure. And I think the whole, like, idea with Savali trying to mimic Arceus or whatever, um, it's really, it's sick. It's just cool. I like Savali a lot. Uh, and type know a lot. The whole just like story premise of it is really cool. Next up, we got Tortinator. I honestly forget this Pokemon exists, but now that I remember him, he is cool. I like him a lot. I wish he was uh, better utilized, but I also have that uh, great Mon. Great Arch. What's the name of that Arch in, uh, in, in St. Louis? Oh, the Gateway Arch. Yes, that's what this man looks like. Look at him. Look at him looking like the Gateway. I love him. He's pretty cool. He's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. He looks like a, like a, a first grader, um, like, kindergarten art project, something like that. Like, he looks like a clay model, which I guess is interesting. It makes him stand out, but he's all right. He's all right. I like him. He's cool. Outside of that, like, fact, he's, he's pretty solid. We got Komodo ear here. Um, overall, I really like Komodo. Really cool design. Fantastic. Beautiful. Love him a lot. What do we got next? We have, uh, what other long neck mons are there? I guess Feromosa? Feromosa is really cool. I, I just really hate how Feromosa wasn't like a, uh, a uh, ultra ego or a transformation of Lusamine. Like there was that whole theory going around where like, you know, Nihaligo was Lily and then, um, what was it? What was it? What was the other, what's the other dude's name? Uh, Buzzwool was like Gladion and like Zergatry was, um, what the, what the fuck is his name? Leader Team Skull. I forgot his name. Uh, Guzma. That's it. But yeah, no, basically there was that whole theory, and I thought that theory was so good, man. It sucks that they just kind of took it out. And, like, the fact that Feromosa's pose fits perfectly with Lusamines, it's like, bro, are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? Like, I have no idea what Game Freak was, was planning with that, but it's just kind of unfortunate that that all went to waste. Not gonna lie. We got Celesteela. I don't know if that's considered a neck or not, but I like Celesteela a lot. The fact that he's so massive is awesome. Uh, and I just, I love, I love him. He's just cool. He's just cool, man. I don't really have a lot of experience with these Ultra Beasts just because of the fact that, uh, I never was, like, super into Gen 7. Like, I played it a couple times, but, like, I never got super duper into it, so I can't really say much about, um, like, especially, like, the newer Ultra Beasts. I don't think I've ever used in my life. Uh, Necrozma. Necrozma is, eh, never mind. He doesn't have a neck. <laughs> skirt. Skirt. What else? What's our last long-necked Pokemon? Is it Naganadel? Naganadel? I've never used this Pokemon in my life, but I like Naganadel a lot. He is cool. His design is really sick. I respect that. What do we have next? I think that's it. Unless we want to count, like, Blastafuff, whatever the fuck this is. I think he's cool. He's super unique. His special attack is fucking insane. Oh, my goodness. Um, but, you yeah, know, outside of that, I think that's it. I think that's it when it comes to long-necked Mon. Literally, I've been recording for an hour now. I don't know how long this video is actually going to be. I'm sorry if it's, like, anything longer than 30 minutes. But with that being said, um, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I had a lot of fun making this video. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button down below. Comment, subscribe, all your kind of stuff. Today is actually my day of graduation, uh, which is super exciting. If I'm able to get this up on the day that I want to get it up, today is actually the day that I'm graduating, which is super, super duper cool. Um, so I'm really excited about that. But anyways, we got more videos like this coming soon. Look out for it. I definitely want to make more one-off videos, especially because as of right now, uh, we don't have any like video projects going on in terms of the channel specifically. We have the 3A co-op on Vinny's, but like there's no video content being posted to this channel. So I'm trying to increase that, trying to bring more videos to you guys. I want to try and edit more. Uh, with that being said, I love you dudes. Thank you all so much for your support. The like button down below, comment, subscribe, all your kind of stuff. Comment down below more stupid ideas you want me to do in the future. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye. What just- oh my-